So I know it's pretty darn close to lunchtime, so I'm going to rattle through this as, as sort of quick as I can, but still get the idea across. Those that were here on Sunday would have seen Lane when he did his little diagram, about little demo about plotting he threw in some dimensions and leaders and bits and pieces like that. This is just a, a really quick intro into how you can actually get in and configure them, create your own, set them up, you know, all that kind of stuff, customise them basically. You know, so we're talking about specifically these new drafting objects, the dimensions, the tables, the leaders. So anyone that's been involved in customising your, your 12D for your business before will know this traditional old search path that 12D will look for setup files, you're working, your user, your setups, etc, etc. And as soon as it finds a file in any one of those paths, that's it, it stops, it uses that file, ignores anything else. Okay? With the added complexity of the include commands, so even if it finds a file, it could still be adding in files from God knows where on your system, and even trying to trace down some of those linkages can be, um, well, interesting. Okay. With the setups of these new elements, there's a whole new approach to how you manage all these different setup files. In this case, it's not a one or the other situation. This is an and situation. Everywhere one of these standard files exists in that search path, it's going to get added into your list of available styles. All right. So it's a whole new approach to some of these customization and setup files. And um, fingers crossed it's a sign of things to come for uh, some of the other setup files that 12D lets us get in and muck around with. Okay. So the actual files themselves, what we're talking about here, these XML files, that's just where 12D is heading. That's where they store all this data. So these particular styles will hold you know, your, your colors, your fonts, your sizes, all those kinds of things. Um, there is a fourth one called the drafting text XML. We'll get into that a little bit later. The actual setting up of that one is just not quite as same, not quite as easy as the others, but fingers crossed. Hey, Tony. <laughs> all right. Um, so the, the beauty of having this, we've got all these different files coming from different folders, so how the hell do you know where things have come from? Well, you get a panel that actually shows you where it's found various files and up the top here, I can see I don't actually have one in my working folder, so it gives me the option to create a whole new one if I want. Okay. All right, so enough talk. Let's do it. Okay. Holy bloody hell, there's a lot of stuff running on here. Okay, so just trying to keep this as quick and painless as possible. So I've got some dimensions here, and to get in and manipulate the actual styles of these dimensions comes up with one of these little panels so I can go in and edit the things that are in the user folder because I've got access to those folders but with setups I can only view because that's from coming from program files which is read only you know you've got to be an administrator to get in there and that sort of stuff so you can actually lock away if it's in a read only area this panel won't let you um, muck around with it okay so some of the things that are that are in here, for example, I've got a, a little style set up here with, say, I just want Arial fonts two and a half mil high, and um, the number of things that you can control in this is just nuts. You know, you, all the different little pieces of line work, all the different symbology, the fonts, you name it, you can control the whole the whole lot. All right, so. We are going to ship out a few different sort of examples so you can at least start with something and uh, go from there to get what you actually want out of your system. Okay. Just as an example, these dimensions were all created with the same style. Okay. So we've got things that are dimensioning the actual length of an arc here. I've got things dimensioning my lane widths and so forth. And with that exact same style, I've even dimensioned the radius of an arc. So slightly different style, it's using the sort of leader version of the dimension rather than aligned with, with legs on it and so forth. Okay. And I look at that and I think, well, it's kind of close, but I really don't like the way that text is positioned sort of offset from the, from the leader line itself. All right. So I want to get in and see what I can do about that. With the dimension style itself, 
basically I'm going to have to create a new one because there's just the one setting for the text, how it sits within your dimension. And this is sitting fine on my normal align type, but I really need a new version. So I'm going to go in and create a whole new dimension in my working area. Okay. Now here's another beautiful thing about this editor. Even though I'm working in my local version of this file, I still get to see what's in all the other ones all at the same time in the same panel. And that is just absolutely brilliant. So what that means now is I can go into, where was it? My customer user one, where I had a, a few decent styles. And I'm generally happy with this Arial 2.5, just want to tweak it. So within this editor, I can copy that style, come up into my local folder, and paste it. So I've literally copied styles from one file to another and creating a new file on the fly. <laughs> it's just so damn easy. All right. All right. So down in the text style here, I can say, well, this is the bits that I actually wanted to change. I wanted to change the... Um, the offset and raise values. Okay, I actually do want to offset it just a little bit so it's not sitting right on the line. I don't want to raise it at all. I just want to have it in line. And I'm going to play with the justification to have it middle left rather than bottom center or whatever it was. Okay. Another huge innovation with these setup files, which is just going to make anyone who has to do customization, well, where's that little picture of the girl wetting her pants again? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I actually need it now. All right. Not only can we write this file away, we can apply this new style into our session. I don't have to restart 12D to get access to this new configuration. Now, how many setup files you're playing with, you always got to restart the session all the time just to see what you've changed and what, what you've done. Okay. So now with that, oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to change the name, so it's just destroyed my other ones. Whoops, sorry, I'm trying to do things a little bit too fast because we're a bit pushed for time. So this one is really particularly just for those radius type styles. So I'm going to overwrite what I stuffed up before and apply it again. And now it can actually find the proper style of that name that it was using before. So I've actually fixed those up again, which is great. Okay. Now, within the editor for your, for your objects, if I go in and now edit this, this um, dimension here, probably a bit tricky to see, but down in the prompt area, there's your little keyboard shortcuts for editing and manipulating these things. So I go S for style, simply pick my new one out of the list, my two and a half radius version this time, job done. Okay, so that's just brilliant. That's one of the best innovations I reckon I've seen in 12D for a long time to manage your configuration and set up stuff. Okay. Now, just one last little thing before we do call it a day. When Lane was doing his area dimensioning on Sunday, we noticed he used exactly the same style and he was getting a, a, a big area labelling in hectares and another one labelling in square metres. Right. The way that is done is with this fourth file that I sort of mentioned before, this, this drafting text thing. Um, and I'll give you an idea, I'll, I'll just um, do something with this dimension just on the end here. So, oops, I'm not creating, wrong button, excuse me. Okay, editing. Now, it's called text formatting, so I go to the, the T for text, and the format that I'm running on here at the moment is using the actual calculated value, which is described by the little angle brackets there, and I've just whacked a piece of text on the end, say M for meters. Okay, so I'm not doing anything with the actual value itself. Okay. Um, if I wanted to, I could muck around with the number of decimal places. I could throw a D for decimal and say, I actually want three decimal places here, thanks. Press enter. So you can start to sort of control how the value is being displayed. All right. So that's a nice simple one, but uh, hang on to your hats. What if I had possibility of some of these dimensions being over quite quite long um, sort of stretches. So we can even build now these if else kind of statements into how we display and manage the values that we're showing on our screen. 
So in this case, I'm saying, well, if my value is greater than or equal to 1,000, now, of course, 12D works in metres, so that means 1,000 metres, then let's divide this sucker by 1,000. Still going to run at three decimal places. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. And call it kilometres. But if it's not bigger than 1,000, but it is still bigger than one metre, then I'll just run it as a normal metre type dimension. That's cool. If it doesn't suit either of those two conditions, I'll multiply it by 1,000 and call it millimetres. All right. Now, the actual setup, this is where the configuration of the, the standard files gets a, a wee bit tricky. So I actually find it easy just to have a text file. And when you come, a, come up with a few of these things, just cut and paste them away into a little file and you can get them anywhere, anytime. So literally just going to copy this piece of text and changing the text format of this dimension and I'm just going to paste it in. Uh, you can actually resize these things so you can see everything you put in there. Press enter and I've got my three and a half meters back. Right. Now it's going to be a little bit tricky to show the kilometers just because of the <coughs> sheer size I'd have to move this thing around. But if I extend this original object that I dimensioned, this uh, little stop bar here, and start bringing it down smaller, once it gets under that one meter mark, I'm now running this thing as millimetres. Okay. Now, that's basically the, the gist of what I was going to show today. In terms of all those different commands and how they work, there is quite a lot of uh, documentation that's going to come with this. So it's going to show just what the brackets mean, what sort of mucking around you can do with your values and so forth. For example, if I wanted to show that value was feet instead of metres, well, instead of multiplying by a thousand or whatever, well, I could multiply it by you know three point two or one eight or whatever the heck it is to get to, to get to feet. So there's plenty of different sort of docos and examples of how you can round up, round down, round off, muck around with decimals, factors, all sorts of different things. So very very powerful little tools. So get into them, get configuring. Okay, I think we're done. Cheers.